Hey guys, it is Tuesday, um, September the 18th. Um, the reason it is Tuesday is because we were out Friday and yesterday because of Hurricane Florence. Um, the storm did come through here. It had died down majorly before it got here. The only issue was there was lots of rain, so there were um, some of the roads were washed out and some minor flooding. Nothing super major, but the city seems to be better now, and we are going about our daily lives. All of my students were here today except one, so I think everybody is safe and okay. I think the worst that happened from what I had heard was one person had their house. A tree fell in their house and then um, several people or well, lots of people in the area were without power I want to say between our area like the Charlotte metro area we, there was I don't know I want to say it was over 70,000 people without power I never lost power so I'm very fortunate yay um, however, we came back in our grades, um, our progress report still must go home um, tomorrow. And I did not have a reading or a writing grade, so I did an assessment today on both reading and writing. I have graded all of my writing assessments while they were doing their reading assessments. And I'm going to get those graded this afternoon and put those grades in. What else? I need to stuff my red folders because those go home tomorrow as well. And then there's also a retirement party for somebody that retired last year. So I need to go get um, get a couple things done and go show my face at that. I think it starts in about 24 minutes. So I have a few minutes to kind of run around and do some stuff. But I will definitely check back in with you guys in a little bit and show you kind of my plans this week and what we've gotten into. And yeah. All right. I will see you guys soon. Bye. So it is right at six o'clock and I got all of my progress reports done. They're handwritten. So let me just show you like a blank one. Okay. So I have to write like um, the student name, my name, and then their average for reading, writing, math, science, social studies. And then I have to get four separate grades for conduct. And then I can request a conference or not request a conference. But I also have to start off which standards I have taught. And then I have to put their guided reading level at the very top. So I got all of those done. And then I made a copy of each of those for my records just in case something happens and one or two doesn't get don't get oh, brought back so anyway my room is pretty clean now i got my after school group to move the chairs over here um and just put their chair what do you call those things chair pouches chair sacks on the um the tables because we um use mini m&ms today that are in here for a graphing activity and that actually worked really well so um if you buy a bag of like the mini m&ms you get so many more m&ms 
So I was able to give the kids so many more M&Ms for their graphs. And they were able to use a scale for the graph. So they ended up doing it by twos. Um, just because I didn't know, sorry, put them up. I didn't know the exact number they would get. So I just had them do it by twos and I will kind of flip you around and show you that. So this is the graphing activity. Um, I just put my kids into small groups and they did it. And I have one group that didn't quite finish and some of them didn't color their M&Ms, but I was more worried about the graphing by the scale and answering the questions. So those are done. Um, I found this on Teachers Pay Teachers this weekend. I just searched for bar graph activities. This was a freebie. I'm not really sure who had it in their store, but it is a freebie if you want to just search for a free bar graph activity. Super easy. I used the mini M&Ms. Then... In my after school program this afternoon, we did a timeline strategy for writing and I was like, I want to know from when you wake up to when you go to sleep. And I was like, you need to include at least 10 details in between. So that was hard for some of them, but I told them they couldn't play with Legos, which is what we did today until they were finished. So some of them are not very, I mean, they're boys, so they're kind of sloppy. Um... But a lot of them wanted to put two days in there, and I had to, like, show them on the timeline. I'm like, nope, that's the end of your first day and beginning of your second. Um, that's a, This is actually my child. I actually teach him in the after-school program. So there's that. And this kid did two separate days, which is fine. So I don't mind them doing two separate days, but what I'm trying to get them to do is add more detail. So, like... Um, like, my son, for example, he was like, I woke up, and then I played on the PlayStation, and then I watched a movie, and then I ate breakfast, and then I ate lunch, and then I ate dinner, and then I watched TV. I was like, what did you play on the PlayStation? What did you um, watch on the TV? What did you eat for lunch? What did you eat for dinner? Um, so, just trying to get them to add more of those details. <laughs> I make mine in third grade. I feel like in a composition book, they should be able to write an entire page, especially by the end of the year. Um, but yeah, they need to be able to include those details. There's no reason why they can't write a whole page in third grade about their day. So I'm trying to use that so that they could, like if they thought about something else they did, they could go back and add it. Like if they got through and they only had like six details, they're like, okay, I've got to come up with four more details. Where can I put it? But they can still go back and add it to their timeline. So yeah. Anyway, I'm about to finish. I'm going to stuff my folders and then I am going to go through that. And I'm, I'm going to go through that before I leave today. So let me get off of here and get my folders done really quickly. And then I'm going to go through that box of stuff for you guys. Because I know I promised you guys like three weeks ago and it's just been crazy, especially with the hurricane and everything. <sighs> anyway, all right, I'm getting off here and I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. It is Thursday at 536. I just got in with all my duties. I'm so sorry that I've been super busy. Um, we had team planning today during our planning period and then we did not get finished so then we had to go into after school and I did it in after school duty and then yesterday was just crazy busy um I ended up staying up here until 6 30 I had an IEP meeting that took up any amount of free time that I could have possibly got on here and vlogged so it is what it is so anyway today in my guided reading groups I did a couple of writing records and I'm going to cover up the students names so, anyway, this child was not here last year. She was at a different school um, within our district. And um, her our permanent records come over with the Pontus and Pinnell um, folders if they're within district. So, we transfer those back and forth. Anyway, she's like a level P is what they said. Actually, I think they said she was a Q. And I was like, I'm going to put her at a P. And... Um, <sighs> I don't know, after meeting with that group a couple of times, because I feel like you have to kind of get a feel on people and look at their responses. So anyway, uh, this was what the running record looked like. And if you're not a teacher, this probably means nothing to you. But basically, 
every time that there's not a check, there is like an error or a self-correction. So I got down and it was like an 83% accuracy with a nine for every nine errors. There was one self-correction. So, and using teacher judgment, and I made some notes on there about it being very choppy, no expression, um, way too hard. My next group is an M. And I am going to go ahead and put her in my M's because this is kind of how I do my groups. Um, like my M started at M Fiction. And we are actually, I just put a book that I'm starting with them tomorrow that's going to be M Nonfiction. And um, then I move them straight into N Fiction. And the ones that can't hang, go back. And the ones that can keep going. So I always do fiction and then nonfiction because typically the questions and responses, foremost, not all, seem to be have a little bit more trouble on the fiction. It seems to be a little bit harder for him on the nonfiction. Excuse me. Um. So instead of just making a special group just for her, I'm going ahead and putting her in the M, and we're gonna, I'm going to work with the nonfiction on her. And the worst kind of worst is when they move to ends, she'll be right on in ends next week. And then maybe, you know, we might get, usually my students kind of get stuck it in for a little bit longer. Like they move through O&P or they get stuck at O&P together for a while. And then QRS is kind of, they, they kind of get stuck together too. Um, but we may, may spend about a month on ends. Maybe I'll do fiction, nonfiction, then another fiction, then another nonfiction, and then we'll be ready to move on. I don't think it will hurt her. Um, at worst, maybe I could give her some more advanced questions and expect harder responses, but I definitely don't think she's ready for a P. Nobody should be getting 83% accuracy ever. I did another student today. And I'm not 100% sure how I felt about this. I had him at a K. Now, he is at a 90% accuracy. Um, and he does not self-correct. But most of the, almost all of his errors that he did have were, um, like, ad additions. I'm not an omission, but, like, where you, where you add something in. Um, but it all like made sense. So it didn't really affect the meaning, which I think definitely makes a difference. Um, so I don't know. I need to do a comprehensive piece. And like, I do that with my groups and I read their journals, but I need to get do like a one-on-one -on -one reading conferences with my students. I'm going to try to do all running records and then do some reading conferences and really figure out what they know on their own because sometimes when you're working in a group and you're asking a question and one student's volunteering information, you really don't know what the rest of the students know. Anyway, I'm going through all of that, trying to get my documentation in early because I have to conference with all parents that are below grade level before the first nine weeks because in South Carolina we passed um, what we call our reach to succeed laws. So there is a mandate retention unless they have I think there's 11 exemptions. It's a joke. I didn't say that. Anyway, um, so that we're supposed to actually retain students that are not reading on grade level. However, the cutoff score last year was end of first grade. And it's supposed to be gradually increasing each year, but I don't know what the new cutoff score is for this year. Um, so anyway, we'll see. So I will kind of go and show you a few things that I did yesterday. I did this drop-in lesson on character, emotions versus traits. I'm going to put that on my ELA anchor chart over there. I'm going to kind of move it around to get it off my whiteboard. I don't know if I'm going to get to that today because I need to do another guided reading lesson for my level K group, and I don't know. What do I need to do? Oh, I got computers. I feel like I'm all over the place right now. I did. I need to make a flip chart for my team for subtraction. I just, I just looked down at my to-do list. Um, I got all of my computers. Well, I am actually short one for my students. These are touchscreen HPs. Um, so if they finally... 
or updated and in and I have a locker with like this 16 socket power strip last year I had all the cords like all of these were on the outside and they were just like bunched up right here and I really didn't want that this year especially with my headphone bag being down there so I'm threading them in through the inside um hopefully that the door will shut when I get them in I haven't checked that yet Anyway, at some point, I also want to update my word wall. Um, I have been using markers, and I probably will still be using markers just for the convenience, but I do want to kind of take whatever is up there already and print them so that they can all be the same size and I can fit more up there. I don't know. I think that pretty much wraps up today, and I will try to definitely get some more content on here tomorrow um, for you guys. But yeah, so I'm going to go work on guided reading plans and getting a flip, flip, a flip chart ready for next week. And yeah, I think that's about it for now. All right. Bye, guys. Yes, can I get a venti iced coffee? Okay, yes. Coffee, do you want cream and sugar in that? Um, just half and half. Okay. Just half and half. Okay, anything else for you today, ma'am? That's all. Thank you. Guys, I'm just here to close out the vlog for you guys. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful upcoming week and year. And remember to like and subscribe. And I will definitely be getting more content to you soon and different content as well. All right, guys. Bye.